you know that hosting a full stack application isn't easy. You have to set up servers, configure the CI CD pipeline, add a DDoS protection like Cloudflare, set up DNS records, and so on. But what if you could do all of that with just the click of a button? That's what Cloudflare Pages can do for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to build an API for your front end application using Pages functions and deploy your full stack application to Pages. If you're not familiar with Cloudflare Pages, it's a platform as a service offering that lets you instantly deploy your full stack applications to the Cloudflare global network. With Pages, you get the guarantee of Cloudflare's DDoS protection, high availability, and load tolerance without having to invest in your own server or any costly load balancing services. Pages Functions is a subproduct of Pages that lets you deploy server side code to enable dynamic functionality without running a dedicated server. You can quickly deploy an API and use it from your front end application. In this video, I'll create a full stack application using React and I'll use Pages functions to host the back end API for the application. The whole app will be deployed on Pages. Before you begin, you'll need the latest version of Node.js and Git installed on your system. You'll also need a free Cloudflare account. You can find the links to download all these prerequisites in the video description below. To start, the first thing I need to do is build the front end using the React framework. I'll use the Create Cloudflare CLI in my terminal to create a React application. I'll use the blog front end as the directory where I want to create the app. I'll choose Website or Web App as the type and React as the framework. The dependencies will now be installed. This can take a few minutes. At the final step, I'm asked to choose whether I want to deploy the app to Cloudflare or not. I'll select No, as I'll show how to deploy the app manually later. Then, I'll navigate to the blog front-end directory and start the development server. I'll keep this terminal window open in the background so that the server is automatically reloaded when I make changes. For this application, I'll be using the React Router Library. I'll go ahead and install it using npm. Next, I need to edit the source app.js file. If you're following along, you can grab this code and any other code snippets you need later on in the GitHub repo linked in the video description. I'll delete the existing code from this file. I'll start by creating the boilerplate structure of the app. Then I'll import the necessary modules from the React router library and declare two routes. The first route is for the root URL which loads the posts component and displays the list of all posts. The second route loads the post component which displays a particular post. Pay attention to the use of the ID parameter in the route path. This parameter finds the required post. Now, let's create the two components that were referenced in app.js. First, I'll create a components directory inside source. Then, in the components directory, I'll create two files, post.js and posts.js. In posts.js, I'll create the posts component, which is responsible for displaying a list of posts. I'll start with a state to store the lists of posts. I'll write a useEffect hook where I'll define a getPosts function. This function gets a get request to API posts and sets the list of posts. Finally, I'll call the function so that it starts executing as soon as the component is loaded. The posts array is used to render the list of posts in the HTML document. Next, I'll open the post.js file and create the code for the post component. The post component displays a single post. Just like the posts component, I'll start by defining a useEffect hook and a function to fetch the post from the back end. Remember how I paste the ID parameter to the route? This ID parameter is fetched using the useParams hook. The ID is used to make a get request to the backend API, which returns a specific post. If the post is not found, it renders an empty div. Otherwise, details of the post, including the title, text, and publication date of the post, are rendered on the page. In order for the React router to work, I need to wrap my app component in a browser router component. I'll open index.js and add the browser router import. 
I'll then replace the app component with this code. At this point, the UI is ready and it's time to build the backend API. To do so, I'll create a pages function that stores the blog contents and retrieves it via a JSON API. First, I'll create a functions directory. Then, I'll create an API directory inside the functions directory. The first API route I need to create is the API posts route, which returns the lists of the posts in a JSON array. To create this route, I'll create a posts.js file and add this code. This code imports the posts from data.js and returns it as a JSON array. Next, I'll create a post directory in the API directory. Then, I'll create two files in the post directory, data.js and a dynamic route in id.js. The data.js file stores the lists of the posts. For simplicity, I'll use a dummy JSON file to store the posts. In a production app, you'll likely use a database instead. Here, I've defined two posts, each having an ID, title, text, and publication date. The id.js file sets up the dynamic API route that returns a single post based on its ID. I'll start by defining the onRequestGet function. Inside the function, I'll fetch the ID of the post from the parameters. If the ID is empty, I'll throw a 404 error. Otherwise, I'll find the post from the posts array, which I'll import from our dummy JSON file. If no such post is found, I'll again throw a 404 error. Otherwise, I'll return the post. Once I've updated the id.js file, the API is ready and I now have a full stack application. The last thing I need to do is deploy the app to Cloudflare. I have two options to deploy. I can either use the Wrangler command line tool, or I can use the Cloudflare dashboard. If I were to deploy via the Wrangler CLI tool, I'd need to install and set up Wrangler. You can find the instructions for this in the Wrangler documentation. However, in this video, I'm going to use the Cloudflare dashboard to deploy the application because it doesn't require you to use any CLI tools. To deploy Cloudflare, I need to create a Git repo and connect it to Cloudflare. To create a new repo on GitHub, I'll visit repo.new. I'll give the repo a name and click on Create Repository. GitHub will show me some instructions on how to push my local code to the repository. A Git repository was already initialized by the Cloudflare CLI, so I'll only copy the last few instructions. In my terminal, I'll run git add to add my changes. Then I'll paste the copied commands and run them. After I've pushed the changes to GitHub, I'll log into my Cloudflare dashboard and select My Account. I'll select Workers and Pages, then I'll select Create. I'll click on Pages, and then click on Connect to Git. If you haven't already connected Cloudflare with your GitHub account, you'll be asked to do that. Simply follow the prompts to install the GitHub connector into the newly created repository. I already have GitHub connected, so I'll just select the repo I created and click on Begin Setup. In the Setup Builds and Deployments section, I need to add information about how my application should be built. I'll enter main as the production branch, npm run build as the build command, and build as the build directory. Once I click on save and deploy, Cloudflare will start building and deploying my project. Cloudflare pages will output the build logs as it installs my project dependencies. It builds the project and deploys it to Cloudflare's global network. This process might take a few minutes depending on the size of the project. When the project has finished deploying, Cloudflare will give me a unique URL so I can view my deployed site. When I open the URL, I'll be able to see my app in action. The home page shows the list of the posts by fetching them from the API. Clicking on any individual post will open the single post page. If you've made it this far, congrats! You now have a full stack application running on Cloudflare's global network. If you want to explore everything Cloudflare Pages has to offer, check out the Cloudflare Pages documentation at developers.cloudflare.com forward slash pages. This documentation has everything you need to get started with Pages. You'll also find guides on how to deploy apps in different frameworks, such as Gatsby, Next.js, Vue, and Angular. If you want to migrate an existing app to Cloudflare Pages, the documentation has guides for that too. 
There's also a bunch of tutorials and how-tos that can help you use Pages to its full potential. We'd love for you to join us over on Discord. Just go to discord.cloudflare.com to join. It's a great place to ask questions and get a better idea of what other people are building with Cloudflare's developer tools. I hope you found this tutorial interesting and useful. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to the Cloudflare channel. We have all kinds of videos that can help you learn how to best utilize all the Cloudflare developer tools that are available. Happy coding!